everybody, welcome back to another shoe review. Today we're gonna to be looking at the ASICS Metaspeed Sky after 100 miles. Quick disclosure before we get on the way, this is a shoe I bought with my own money. All opinions are my own, and no one will have a chance to view this before I put it online. Going over some quick specs of the shoe, this has a light engineered mesh upper, which is super breathable, um, a thin tongue, which is not gusseted on either side, and some laces that even with a double knot seem to want to touch the ground. It's like Asics paired with Red Bull on this one because they both tend to give you wings. Underneath that we have 33 millimeters of flight foam blast turbo in the heel and 28 in the forefoot meaning there's a 5 millimeter drop and underneath the shoe there's a healthy slab of Asics grip. So Asics has two different variations of this shoe. This one being the sky and the other one being the edge. Now the edge is it's a higher drop shoe um, and it's for people that like to pick up their speed by increasing cadence, so moving their legs faster as opposed to the sky, which is kind of built for people that increase their stride length to pick up speed. Um, and I'm not really an expert in any of that. I kind of just had to read that before I made this video, so I'm not going to be talking too much more about that. So how have I been using this shoe over the past 100 miles? Um, I've really taken this thing on everything. Easy runs, tempo runs, threshold runs, long runs. Um, and... I really found how not versatile this shoe is, as opposed to a lot of the other super shoes out there. Now, granted, this is supposed to be a race day specific shoe, so that can't really be a knock against it, but when you are running easy in the shoe or if you're falling back on your heel, it really feels unstable and it's not, it's not a very pleasant ride. It's quite firm as well. However, where this shoe really excels is when you're landing midfoot and forefoot and you're having good form. Um, you just tend to go faster and it feels easier. Where this shoe really did shine for me was those interval sessions where when you go, it's just best form you can, you're just putting the pedal to the metal kind of thing and you're going. Um, and in between reps, you're just trying to keep the good form at, probably at a much slower pace. Um, but like how uncomfortable this thing feels when you get back on the heel, it almost makes you want to continually land in this this area of the shoe. Um, you're very hyper aware of that. Uh, because of how I've used this shoe too, I haven't had any durability concerns at all. This ASICS grip almost looks completely brand new and the traction's been unbelievable. Honestly, I was concerned with the way this grip is laid out and the holes. Uh, there's a lot of loose rocks and stones where I run, uh, but I've never had any situation where a rock's been truly just jabbed in there and I had to stop and pick it out. Yeah, there's a lot of little pebbles and some that are still in there right now, but it has not been a concern at all for me. What I really don't like about this shoe, and this might come off as a little bit harsh, but you know, Asics put this shoe out there and they charged a premium price for it. So it's fair to be judged this way. And it honestly feels kind of like a Walmart vapor fly to me. You know, the upper it's breathable, but it just, like it feels cheap and scratchy. The laces are unbelievable. I mean, they are they're pretty bunk and they're so long, it's just unnecessary. The tongue, it's nice. It's not gusseted in any way. Um, the Flight Foam Blast Turbo, it is super responsive, but it's not as soft and there's not as much of it as you get in a Vaporfly. Uh, the ASIC script has been amazing though. The, the other problem with that is that they're charging 325 and now I understand that there is a Metaspeed, Metaspeed Sky Plus out there right now. However, in Canada, from where I found, this shoe still is not discounted. So really for $5 more, you could get a Vaporfly 2 for something, you know, that has more. Another negative I'd probably say about this shoe is because of how it feels and the lack of rubber here at the at the heel and how like small the stack height is i know 33 is still it's still a lot compared to traditional running shoes but in today's standards it's not you're really limiting the scope of who this shoe is for now if you're someone that has perfect stride and you're a very confident runner and you don't need the maximal stack heights for the marathon distance um then this then this is this is a great shoe for you but if you're someone that shuffles or you, you just run marathons for fun and you know having perfect foot strike every time is like not your main goal you know and you're just having fun out there there's a lot more accommodating shoes out there which i have reviewed so if you'd like to go check those out please do overall i would say this has been a great workout shoe for me uh, 
again, tempos, intervals, those kind of like hard, shorter sessions, this shoe's been amazing. But at $325, it's impossible for me to recommend something like this. Now, I understand that there's a lot of people that run full marathons in this and set unbelievable times. I'm not that runner, you know, so, and this is not what I'm looking for in a, in a marathon distance shoe. So um, just keep that in mind that we're all different and we all have different needs. And unfortunately, this just is not for me. Thank you for tuning into another shoe review. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe down below. It's been awesome just seeing this channel grow and just kind of being able to interact with each and every one of you. And I promise I will start posting more videos about my journey from chemo and cancer to qualifying for the Boston Marathon as we prepare for it in 2023. So that's up and coming. So please join along for the ride. Until next time, keep working hard and having fun. See ya.